This is KGW News at Noon. We begin with breaking news this noon. Providence and Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oregon just announced they've reached an agreement to continue working together. Providence made the announcement in a statement saying both sides worked through the weekend to iron out a new contract. The previous contract between the two companies expired at the end of last year and the two had been stuck negotiating reimbursement rates. They say while both sides work on hammering out the details in that new contract, Providence patients with Regents Insurance will continue to pay in network rates. Now to a big story in our area. Of course, we are talking about weather. This map shows the ice storm warning for our region starting tomorrow. Already at least a dozen school districts have announced there will be no school tomorrow. Among those on the list, Salem Kaiser, the second largest district in Oregon. For a full list of closures, you can go to our website, kgw.com slash closings. So today may be beautiful with clear skies for many of us, but gosh, more winter weather yeah. on the way, Rod. Yeah, today's unfortunately going to be kind of a short respite. Of course, it hasn't warmed. It's still cold. It just looks better outside. What I want you to notice uh, with the ice storm warning, which begins tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., extends through the night into early Wednesday morning, is that this does not, does not include the immediate coastal areas where it should be above freezing and rain, but it does include the coast range up and down I-5, the slopes of the Cascades and the gorge all the way from uh, Sandy into uh, Hood River and then upward through Clark County and into Callas counties. Ice accumulations, most areas picking up a tenth to two tenths. Now, if you get in a spot closer to the gorge where the icing will be continuing into the day Wednesday, you could be looking at a half to even three quarters of an inch of significant ice accumulation, wading down tree branches, wading down power lines and making travel very, very difficult. We are up to 29, so my forecast high is 30 today. I think we're going to at least do that. Maybe we get to 32. Look at that east wind, though, still, st still sustained out along the Columbia River to 24. So that's helping keeping us cold. Real quick, future cast tomorrow morning. You wake up early, it's dry, but during the morning in blue, this would be light snow developing to flurries. I don't think overly consequential, but then in the mid-afternoon hours, here we are at 4, 430, this salmon color this time around, that is all freezing rain accumulations continuing in Portland overnight while Salem warms and changes to rain Tuesday overnight. But Portland, even in the morning hours coming out of the gorge in East County, especially there could be a continuance of ice accumulation from freezing rain Wednesday morning. Right now, 29 bouncing up to 30, 28 degrees at four o'clock. Another cold night coming, by the way, 23 at 8 p.m. We'll break down further information on that ice storm morning in a couple of minutes coming up. Look at that. That tree went down near Northwest Cannon Way. That's in the Portland area. Our viewer Amanda sent it to us last night through our KGW website. You can see it go right down after the wind kept pushing it over. Of course, over the weekend, we saw and heard about dozens of reports of downed trees all across the area. Let's bring in KGW's Devin Haskins. He's live in Southwest Portland on Martha Street, just off Beaverton Hillsdale Highway. You've been there all morning, Devin. I know there have been trees that hit multiple homes. I hear you spoke with a homeowner. Yeah, yeah we did. And right now we're in the back uh, yard of one of her neighbors. We're going to show you a couple houses that were hit right next to each other. So take a look at this one. This one actually took a couple trees down on it. You see the one in the very front of the house. This here uh, is the back of the house. Just feet away. Another tree hit their house. We talked to them about uh, how they were inside when it happened. We never, ever, ever would have thought something like this could happen. Jesse Cox and her husband Sam say they and their two-year-old are lucky to be alive. While laying in bed just before six on Saturday morning, a tree crashed through their roof, narrowly missing them. I mean, 15 feet over that tree would have been, we would have been killed. This photo from the inside shows the aftermath. We jumped out of bed immediately. We just started, I mean, there was a set of panic. But then we immediately grabbed our son and we grabbed our dog and we just tried to make our way out of the house. Once they got out front, it wasn't much better. Go out the front door of the deck, everything covered in tree branches, wind blowing like crazy. Multiple trees had fallen, some of them on their neighbors' homes, just like theirs. And about an hour later, 
and all of a sudden there was PGE guys out there trying to put up a power line and then a tree fell directly onto their truck. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. I can't even, it's a miracle that it didn't fall on those men. The men went running up the street. The family's first home. Yeah. Smash by Mother Nature. We bought, we bought sleds on Friday. We thought this was going to be our kids' first snow day. Instead, they're just thankful everyone was okay. All right, so that PGE truck right there, you can see just smashed by one of those trucks. You got another, uh, uh, somebody else's vehicle beyond that, another house hit by a tree. So just on the other side of uh, Jesse's house here is the city on lot where a couple of those trees came from. She says she wants the city to come in and take care of those trees. Till then, she says she doesn't feel safe being in her own house. Right now, they say they have a lot of damage to their house. They still have uh, uh, insurance agents coming in to check it out. Until they get it fixed, they don't know how long it'll be until they can move back in. Back to you. Gosh, so frustrating. Our thoughts are with those homeowners. Thank you, yeah. Devin. Well, the wind and those downed trees have caused widespread power outages. PGE saying that getting everyone's power restored will take the better part of this week. And with the freezing rain we're expecting, PGE warns there could be even more outages. Right now, you can see on your screen where things stand. PGE reporting a little over 65,000. Um, looks like 72,000 right there on your screen. But so far, 65,000 or so customers still without power. Pacific Power almost 8,000. Thousand. Clark Public Utilities, just uh, about 230 or so customers. And it's been frustrating for people who still don't have power. Adding to that frustration, this message making its rounds on social media. Some of you sent it to us. It claims to be from PGE saying anyone who didn't have power restored by eight last night would have to wait until next Monday because emergency transformers were getting shipped in. We checked in with PGE and officials there say that message is not true. In a statement, PGE told us yesterday that more than a thousand crew members worked on issues throughout last night. We're expecting, of course, more updates from PGE as their crews make progress later today. And to Southeast Portland now, where a family ended up in the hospital yesterday with carbon monoxide poisoning. Ashley Grams talked to the neighbor who helped get them out. That neighbor says she believes the family was trying to stay warm after the power went out. A fire truck, the only signal that something went wrong on Sunday afternoon at this apartment complex in the Centennial neighborhood. And it wasn't a fire. Crews pulled five people sick with carbon monoxide poisoning out of this unit. A knock on my door again and he's right there and he says, help me, please. This is the woman who found the family. She lives across the hall. And I walk out into the hallway and I look down the stairs at the at the bay window seating area and his child is like throwing up, heaving. Headache, confusion, and vomiting are all symptoms that someone has breathed in too much of the colorless, odorless gas. I dragged the kid outside to get some fresh air and the other, some other guy from their family pulled up and started pulling the rest of the people out of the house. Royer says she called 911 and firefighters evacuated other apartments in the complex. Portland Fire and Rescue says all five of the patients were conscious and taken to a hospital. It was terrifying. Royer says she thinks the family was just trying to stay warm when they got sick. Across the street, power lines are down, a tree cutting off their ability to turn on the heat for the past 24 hours. The door to their apartment was open and I saw the generator and I, I knew right away. Firefighters say it was both using that generator and cooking with propane indoors that poisoned the family. Be aware of the hazards, especially when the weather's like this. You know, you want to be holed up, you don't want to open the windows, but Gas generators are not meant to be used inside, especially with no ventilation at all. That was Ashley Graham's reporting. Portland Fire and Rescue says crews responded to 17 carbon monoxide calls on Saturday alone. They want to stress people should never run a gas powered generator inside their home. Multnomah County has opened up three additional warming shelters for people who need somewhere warm to go. Dozens of sites across the county will be open through 8 o'clock tonight. County officials say the shelters served hundreds of people over the weekend, and now the county is looking for shelter volunteers to help meet demand. I am urging community volunteers to staff shelters as we continue expanding our response to this weekend's deadly winter storm. Anyone is encouraged to join us, especially people who have volunteered before 
and those with experience in human services and health related settings. So the county hoping those volunteers help meet demand. This morning, Lake Oswego officials also announced its public library will be open until 3 today in the afternoon as a warming center. You can call 211 to find the shelter closest to you. We've got a full list as well of shelters in other counties on our KGW website. Also a heads up, Max service is suspended yet again today. Service was suspended this weekend because of fallen trees on both tracks and wires. Packed ice and snow covering tracks in Portland is also causing problems. Crews will have to figure out how to break up the ice or melt it somehow before Max trains can run again. TriMet says there will be shuttle buses in some spots, but riders should rely on regular bus lines or find other transportation. Either way, expect delays. For the latest updates, go to TriMet.org slash alerts. And take a look at this video. The freezing weather made a pipe burst at Pioneer Place Mall in downtown Portland yesterday. You can see a shopper walking through standing water. That appeared to be inches deep. One shopper we spoke to says the water just seemed to be everywhere. I just went into the mall and I noticed like it was flooded everywhere. And so I just looked to the right and I seen like this water dripping down everywhere and everything inside the store. And so I was just like, wow. So I put up my phone and recorded a video because I was like, someone has to see this, you know. Portland Fire and Rescue told us the pipe burst because a construction project exposed it to the cold. Crews were able to shut off the building's water. Stay with KGW for the latest weather coverage. There are lots of ways to do it. You can keep updated with us on air, online, streaming through KGW Plus, or you can download the KGW app.